it's Bonnie with another Tuesday's tip. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh our computer and give everybody a little bit of time to join us and make sure everybody can hear me. So if you're with us, or with me, I should say, I'm here flying solo, um, go ahead and give me a shout. Let me know you're here. And we'll go ahead and get started. I know there's about a 10 second delay between um, my little uh, camera over here on my phone and what's showing up over on the computer. I'm having to kind of sit on my feet tonight <laughs> so that you can see my head above my machine. Um, go ahead and refresh my page. I see the picture and I see some over here on my telephone, but I'm not seeing them over here on my computer yet. So I'm going to refresh my page and see what we can get here. Okay. I see Janet's here. And I'm seeing some love or some likes. So I know some others are here. Um, today what we're going to talk about is, we're going to scooch in a little bit. Today what we're going to talk about is um, top loading bobbin cases and how they can be pretty frustrating sometimes. Even though they're supposed to be super duper easy, for some reason, if you're like me, I found the top loading bobbins a little bit more frustrating to get into place properly. So we're going to address that tonight. Okay, I see Shirley and Susan and Carolyn and Janet and several others here. So we're going to get started. I'm going to um, go ahead and remind you that if you haven't signed up for a newsletter, please do so because that's where I announce freebies or well, that's where we give you a couple of freebies just for signing up on our newsletter. And then sometimes I do send out some freebies on our newsletter, but that's also where we announce our sales and um, new releases and, you know, just fun things like that. So if you haven't done so already, you might consider signing up for our newsletter over at SoInspiredByBonnie.com. Okay, got that out of the way. Again, what tonight's topic is going to be is top loading bobbin cases and how they can sometimes be kind of a hassle to get back into place. And when I was preparing for tonight's uh, little Tuesday tip, I thought when I was selling machines, machines way back when, it seemed like I could go from machine to machine to machine and all the top loading bobbins seemed to work very, very similar. Um, whether it be sewing or embroidery or between the different companies. I went and pulled out my old Janome 9000 machine and lo and behold, just comparing the two bobbin uh, cases, the two top loading bobbin cases I should say, they were very, very similar indeed. I'm going to take off this from my, my uh, brother and it's not real happy with me because it's saying you've got that bobbin cover off and you're not supposed to. We want to sew and you've got the bobbin cover off. I'm kind of doing this backwards so I'm having a little trouble getting that little guy out of there. Okay, if you look at these two bobbin cases, they're very, very similar. Um, this one's the Janome from way back when, and this is the Baby Lock or Brother. Baby Lock and Brother use the same exact bobbin case. So just so that you know, they're very, very similar. I'm going to put this bobbin cover back on so it'll be quiet. Now I'm facing the machine towards you in hopes that you'll be able to see this bobbin uh, case area better and I'm going to tilt up the machine here in a minute. Um, but what I wanted to address when I was first trying to get this little bobbin case back in the machine after I had cleaned out the machine, more often than not it was because I got lucky. It wasn't because I knew what I was doing to get it back in there. 
I would fiddle with it until I got the darn thing to lay flat and behave. <laughs> but it wasn't, again, because I knew exactly how it went in. Um, and I have found that a lot of uh, classes teach you how to sew. They teach you the different um, features of the machine. They'll teach you how to thread the machine, but they don't really teach you how to clean the machine and put it back together after you've cleaned it. So I thought we'd kind of address that. I'm gonna come over, and you're not gonna see my head for a little while, but I think it, it most important that you see this bobbin case area and what we're doing with it. And again, most top loading machines are very, very similar. So you're gonna take off the bobbin case cover. Now in my Janome, I have to take off the metal part too. Um, not just the um, this little front cover piece. So there's one place that they might be a little bit different. Um, again, I'm going to put this back up. When you're clean, well, I take that back. I'm going to take it off again. When you're cleaning your machine, obviously you want to take this off. You want to take your your brush. I have a makeup brush that I like. You can use the brush that came with the machine. Either one works well. I just like this be, uh, makeup brush because it, it makes short work of it. And then um, I'm gonna put this back on so my machine's happy because it does not like this off and it's gonna beep at me. When I have this back on, step number one is going to be to push your needle up and needle down button until you have the needle up in the highest position. Now I'm going to I think I'm going to lift the back of this machine a little bit so it's tilted towards you so that maybe you can see that bobbin case area a little bit better. Um, there we go. I think you can see it now. So step number one, again, is the needle up, needle down position so that the needle is in the highest position. Now. I like to do that whether I'm changing a needle or just cleaning down here. Whatever I'm doing, any little work down in this area, I like to push the needle up, needle down uh, position until the needle is in the highest position for me to work on it. And this little guy's going to beep at me, but that's okay. Okay, so your bobbin case, the top loading bobbin case, has you know, this little hook up here, but then at the base, you'll see two screws. You'll see a regular screw, and then over here, you'll see what looks to be a, like a Phillips screw. You know, the little heads on the screw, one is a regular one, and one has a little Phillips. In between those two screws, you'll see what looks like, to me, a little toe. I don't know the proper terminology, but it looks kind of like a little tiny toe sticking out there between the two screws. What you're going to do is you're going to take your left thumb and you're going to place the left thumb over that left screw, the screw that's to the left of that little toe. You want that left screw to be facing straight at you as you're putting this little guy back in. You're going to tilt it, you're going to go straight in, and just that easy it goes into place. You can check it by wiggling it, and it should wiggle just ever so slightly. It shouldn't slip out a, a joint or anything else. It should lay nice and flat and stay put. Now, for the bobbin, and I'm gonna put this little cover back on. So you've got number one, needle up, needle down until the needle is in the highest position. Number two is you're going to put your left thumb over the left screw, the screw that's to the left of that little toe. And then number three is you want that left screw facing directly at your chest as you tilt it and put it into the bobbin race area. Okay, now for the bobbin itself, the proper way that this bobbin goes is you hold it in your right hand and when you pull it, it should pull off to the left. So the thread should pull off to the left 
and the bobbin itself should turn counterclockwise. So I'm going to open this little door and then you just drop it in once the thread is falling off to the left. I like to put my right index finger on top of the bobbin so that it doesn't wiggle around anywhere and I can feel it kind of click inside of the um, thread path as well as the little tension springs that are in there and then put that back on. Once I have everything in place, I always like to do one last test. I like to, and I'm gonna to have to come from behind because I can't reach that far. So I'm gonna come from behind, but you always turn the hand wheel towards you when you're sitting at the machine. So since I'm behind the machine, I'm gonna turn it away. But when you're sitting in front of the machine, you always turn it towards you. I'm gonna turn the hand wheel one complete rotation toward me, or if I were in front of the machine, it would be turning toward me. And that way I am assured when I don't hear a clunk or um, anything messing up in there, I'm assured that everything is seated in there properly. If I were to turn it and start turning it toward me as I'm sitting in front of the machine and I hear this gosh awful clunk or it just stops, chances are I'm not going to break a needle because I'm doing it by hand and I will catch it right away and I can make a correction in the bobbin case area. If I were to just do a needle up, needle down, or to just start sewing at this point, my machine doesn't know to stop. It'll just bang right through it and you can mess and ruin a bobbin uh, case, or you can uh, at the very least have the needle go through the bobbin case in it, uh, where it shouldn't. Because they are plastic, the needle can go through and penetrate your bobbin case. So. I hope, I know it's kind of a short and sweet Tuesday's tip tonight, but I think it's a really important one. And like I said, when I was first using um, top loading bobbins on machines for a long, long time, longer than I care to admit to, I was putting them in and jiggling them around until I got lucky. But I didn't really know which way they were supposed to be facing to make it go in correctly. And it wasn't until I was having a lunch with a friend many years ago and she admitted that she was having the same problem that I thought, well, maybe it's not just me. Maybe there's others out there that are having the same problem. And so um, I pinned my, my dealer down and, and had him actually walk me through it and explain it a little bit better. Follow those three tips and I, I promise you it'll be a lot easier once you know the proper way to put it in. Okay, so um, that's all we have for this evening. Like I said, I know it's a short and sweet one, uh, but if you have any questions, let's go ahead and check it out. I'm going to put the machine down and see if we have any questions. Sorry, I keep getting out of view, but... As I said before, I thought it was more important that you see the machine instead of me at this point. So let's go ahead and just double check and make sure we don't have any questions. Um, Ellie says, thank you so much for this video. I've always had a problem re reseating or resetting my bobbin case. See, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. I, I remember, you know, being in classes and um, some ladies struggling with this. And, you know, the front loading ones were really easy. They had a big toe, you faced it towards the front and it just went in really easy. But for some reason, there's just a little bit different angle and a different feel to getting the top loading bobbins into place. Uh, bobbin cases, I should say. Um, Anna says that this is awesome. She said, my destiny, I cleaned out and replaced my bobbin sensor. Oh, it went off as I worked. I finally took it apart and figured out I had it in there wrong, but this definitely helps. I'm so glad that this will help you. Just follow the one, two, three, needle up, needle down, left thumb on the left screw. Make sure that left screw is facing your chest as you put it in there. You know, you kind of tilt it and put it in there. And that little toe um, 
I didn't say this earlier, but that little toe on the bobbin case should be bumping up, <clears throat> excuse me, to the left of, there's a little, um, a little metal spring in there and it'll, it'll butt, butt up against that and it won't go past it. And you can kind of jiggle it. I did show you how it jiggles up uh, the little toe, hits that metal piece um, ever so slightly. There's an ever so slight jiggle. Um, let's see, I think <laughs> Janet said, after years of sewing, I've learned something new. Thanks, I love your videos. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you're getting a kick out of this. You know, sometimes I'm thinking this might be too basic, and then I thought, no, Bonnie, you struggled with this yourself, so I'm sure <laughs> there's got to be someone else that struggles with it, too. And like I said, I really think the, the dealers are so focused on getting us up to speed with all the cool new features of the machine um, that sometimes they don't go back to the basics of how to actually take it apart and put it back together. So I'm glad I was able to help in a small way. Um, let's see, Susan says when cleaning this area, just how deep is it safe to go with the, uh, with the brush or the pipe cleaner? That's a really good question. <clears throat> Susan, I've, I've not had any problem with going in pretty good in there with, with the brush. I go in as, as far as it will. I, I don't jam it, and I uh, don't use metal against the metal, obviously. Um, but I just get in there nice and good. Um, I am a little leery sometimes of pipe cleaners because the tip of the pipe cleaner or the inner core of that pipe cleaner is metal. So I'm a little concerned about pipe cleaners possibly scratching. Um, as I would be more careful using a pipe cleaner so I'm not rubbing up metal to metal and, and uh, bending back the bristles on the brush so much that the metal is exposed. So as long as you're just kind of going real gentle, I don't see a problem with that. But if you're pushing kind of hard with the pipe cleaner, I think that could possibly scratch inside. So I'd be a little careful with that. Um, I'm seeing if we have any new ones. I'm going to refresh my page just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Okay. Oh, Bonnie said that she uses a Q-tip for her dealer. I think that's an excellent idea. I've used a, a Q-tip in there as well. Uh, Q-tips really pick up a lot of dust and, and crud, so they're really good also. Um, Teresa says, if you bend the end of the pipe cleaner into a circle, it is easier. I think that would be easier. I, again, I still, I haven't used a pipe cleaner, so I'm visualizing this. Um, I still see that maybe if you push really hard that the, the bristles might bend back and expose the metal. So again, I just be careful. I don't think it would be a problem as long as you're not getting too carried away in there and too rough. Um, Sandra says, could you use air to clean it out? I've heard pros and cons about the air. Some people will say that the air will actually push things into uh, your machine. I know my dealer used to, to um, sell the air. Uh, I, I know they actually used a compressor, an air compressor to clean things out. Um, but I hear pros and cons to that. I definitely know people, we have a tendency, um, we sew us, sometimes we'll see something and we'll blow on it, you know, like, you know, just to blow it out. That is something we definitely, I think everybody agrees we should not do because there is moisture in our breath. And when we blow into the machine with our breath, we're actually blowing in some moisture as well. And that's, not a good thing to do. So um, on that one, I think I would, um, since I've heard pros and cons on it, I think I would ask your dealer and see uh, what their thoughts on it uh, for your particular machine and uh, make sure that it's, you know, something that they recommend. Um, 
<laughs> Teresa says, oh, yikes, never use air. Never use air. It pushes the lint further into your machine. Yeah, I've, again, I've heard, I've heard both things, and some people, no way. They're not going to go near it with air. And I personally do not use air. Um, I find cleaning that out with a brush is great. I leave uh, the... Uh, the compressed air and things like that to the dealer or the professionals and the technicians because they can open out the machine entirely and blow it whereas we can't we can't take it completely apart we shouldn't take it completely apart where the head is completely off and um, down as far as our technicians will so I would err on the side of not using air you know that's what I do um, And I think we've got the Q-tip. I think that might be all our questions, but I'm going to double check before signing off here just to make sure because I don't want to leave anybody hanging. Um, it looks like we have all the questions answered. So um, if you have a question later on, you think about it, and we've already signed off. No worries, just post your question because we do come back. I do come back and look at them and make sure uh, that we have everybody uh, answered. Teresa says she uses makeup brushes too and they work great. I agree. Um, you know, the little teeny weeny tiny brushes, if you need something kind of stiff to get something out, maybe you haven't cleaned in a while. Um, my Janome was kind of like that. I noticed I hadn't cleaned in a while, so it had a, a little extra buildup in there. But the makeup brushes, I, I recommend brushing that out um, probably after every project, um, just to make sure you've got all the lint and, and crud out of there. Um, but I think, oh, Beva, is that Beva, Beva? B-E-V-A, I'm not sure quite how to say Say that I'm sorry um, she never uses she says she never uses air that she uses q-tips and a small vacuum the small vacuum is great uh, I think everybody can agree that a vacuum sucking out crud um, lint and things like that is a really good really good option to clean out your machine so yeah I would definitely use a vacuum over the air I've I just eh, <laughs> Some people just really have had bad experiences with that, and, and I know some dealers really don't want you doing that. So, And I I never have used air in my machine for that very reason, so I guess I'm going to have to say I, I would not use the air either. But the vacuums, definitely, yeah, because they're going to suck it out. And definitely never blow on your machine. <laughs> That's not a good thing either. Um but I think we've got everybody answered. Again, if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to, to write them down and we can, uh, we'll address them later on because this will be posted on the Facebook page right after we get done here. And then later on, I will have the captions done and we'll get it posted off to YouTube as well as Pinterest. So I'm glad that Several of you were able to come this evening. I know we had to change the times. I apologize for that, but I had grandma duty today and uh, took uh, little Colton off to a swim class and he got to play in the water today. So um, I appreciate you allowing me to change the time and still come and be a part. So I really appreciate that. I know your your time is valuable and I appreciate you taking a little time to spend it with me. So until next Tuesday, bye-bye for now.